Hello and welcome to Psych Boost. In this video we look at Milgram's classic study. We'll be trying to learn some specialist terminology to go with this research. And we'll also look at some evaluations so we can criticise the study. So Milgram, he was interested in why the German people had followed the orders of the Nazi leadership in carrying out the Holocaust and in killing so many people and not rebelling against these orders. So what he said to do was design an experiment to try and test the limits of obedience. So we gained a sample of 40 male, 20 to 50 year old volunteers. These volunteers had answered newspaper ads for a study on memory. Now clearly this wasn't going to be a study on memory, so they were deceived in entering the experiment. At the start of the experiment, the participant was introduced to a confederate. So a confederate is a, partic a participant who actually is known to the experimenter and actually is going to be used to deceive the true participant. Now, one of the participants was meant to receive the role of a teacher and one was received the role of a student. Now, this was rigged, so the true participant would always get the role of the teacher. There was another confederate who was dressed in a lab coat and their role was to be the experimenter or the professor. What the professor did is he took both of the individuals into a side room and strapped the learner, strapped the confederate to a chair and then attached electrodes to the confederate. Then the real participant, who was acting as a teacher, and the experimenter went into a different room. The participant was shown a machine with a range of switches on it. These switches showed electrical currents going from 15 volts all the way up to 450 volts. It was explained to the participant that the learner would be taking part in the memory test, they would be answering questions. And it was the teacher's job, each time the learner got a question wrong, to deliver an electric shock. This electric shock was shown to the uh, participant just to try and put into their minds that there were real electric shocks. Now, of course, these weren't real electric shocks, but it was important that teacher thought that they would be. Hello and welcome to Psych Boost. In this video, we'll be looking at Milgram's classic study. We'll be trying to learn some specialist terminology to go with this research. And we'll also look at some evaluations so we can criticise this study. So Milgram, he was interested in why the German people had followed the orders of the Nazi leadership in carrying out the Holocaust and in killing so many people and not rebelling against these orders. So what he said to do was design an experiment to try and test the limits of obedience. So we gained a sample of 40 male, 20 to 50 year old volunteers. These volunteers had answered newspaper ads for a study on memory. Now clearly this wasn't going to be a study on memory, so they were deceived in entering the experiment. At the start of the experiment, the participant was introduced to a confederate. So a confederate is a, partic a participant who actually is known to the experimenter and actually is going to be used to deceive the true participant. Now, one of the participants was meant to receive the role of a teacher and one was received the role of a student. Now this was rigged, so the true participant would always get the role of the teacher. There was another confederate who was dressed in a lab coat and their role was to be the experimenter or the professor. What the professor did is he took both of the individuals into a side room and strapped the learner, strapped the confederate to a chair and then attached electrodes to the confederate. Then the real participant, who was acting as a teacher, and the experimenter went into a different room. The participant was shown a machine with a range of switches on it. These switches showed electrical currents going from 15 volts all the way up to 450 volts. It was explained to the participant that the learner would be taking part in the memory test, they would be answering questions. And it was the teacher's job, each time the learner got a question wrong, to deliver an electric shock. This electric shock was shown to the uh, participant just to try and put into their minds that there were real electric shocks. Now, of course, these weren't real electric shocks, but it was important that teacher thought that they would be. So they were set out this bank of switches and they increased the shock by 15 volts, all the way up to 450 volts. At the end of the machine, it had a label saying severe shock. Now, as the shocks went up, 
the learner in the other room, the confederate, would make lots of noise and would start to refuse to carry on with the experiment. However, the teacher was told to continue with the experiment for a while. At a set points at 300 volts, the learner would make a loud noise, completely refuse to go on. And after 315 volts, after that shock, the learner would make no more noise. Now this is an indication that the learner has either fallen unconscious or possibly died because of the delivery of these shocks. So clearly this wasn't a pleasant experience for the participant. Um, no one would really enjoy uh, electrocuting another human. So they clearly showed quite a lot of anxiety doing this experiment. Every time the participant, the person doing the role of the teacher, started to resist the experiment, started to, to um, question what they were doing, the experimenter, the person in the lab coat, they encouraged them to continue. So they would use phrases like, you've got no other choice, you must go on, or the experiment demands that you continue. So they're not forcing them physically, but verbally they're encouraging them and ordering them to continue. So what did we find? We found every single participant continued up to 300 volts, despite the loud shouts of pain from the other room. Only 12.5% of participants stopped at that 300 volts, the point where the learner had refused to continue. And the majority, the large majority, about two thirds of participants continued all the way to 450 volts, the point where it said severe shock. These results demonstrated that the Germans weren't a particularly different group of people. Milgram found that Americans were just as likely Evaluative as research. to follow extreme orders. And this research had a big impact in the area of social influence. We might criticise Milgram for the quite artificial nature of his experiment. The participants involved knew they were in an experiment. They might have thought it was on memory, but they knew there was a psychological experiment going on. It could have been that participants had figured out that actually the experiment wasn't real and were just kind of going along with it because they wanted to please the experimenter, a phenomenon called demand characteristics. However, we do have a piece of research by another psychologist called Hoffling. What Hoffling did is he rang nurses in a real hospital ward and he gave them a simple order. He said he was Dr. Smith. He said he would sign off on the form later, but he needed the nurse to give 20 milligrams of an unfamiliar drug. Now on the box, it said the maximum amount of drug to be given was 10 milligrams. Now it was against hospital policy to give um, drugs beyond the limit of the box without signed form from the doctor. But because of the authority of Dr. Smith, 21 out of 22 nurses in this hospital ward agreed to give this dose to the patient. And we might want to say that Hoffling's research is quite good because it was conducted in a real world setting and we can, contain, we can claim that the task had higher mundane realism. So the task was quite realistic for the nurses. Nurses do have to give medicine out on a day-to-day -day basis in a way that Milgram's study did not have mundane realism. We can also say that Hoffling's study had high ecological validity. So the setting that the nurses were in was normal for them. It was a hospital ward. So we might want to say that Hoffling's research backs up Milgram's research, but has higher validity. So it's more likely to be true. We also have some supporting research by Sheridan and King. A criticism of Milgram is that they may have worked out that the shocks weren't real, so it felt okay to give high levels of shocks if they didn't feel that the electricity um, was actually causing any damage. Sheridan and King, um, quite kind of harshly, gave real electric shocks to a puppy. Well, they had participants give real electric shocks to a puppy in a setup very similar to Milgram. And he found that 
54% of participants would give what they thought was a fatal shock to the puppy, although though the shocks were real, it wasn't an actual fatal shock. And 100% of females gave fatal shocks to the puppy. So what we can say is this research shows that even when shocks are real, participants will still give extreme shocks. What we may also be able to say as well is 54% of male participants gave extreme shocks, but 100% of females gave fatal shocks. Milgram's original research only included males, so we might criticise Milgram's research for containing gender bias. We don't know if Milgram's original research would have been different if he had included females. But the research by Sharon and King hints that actually obedience would have been higher for females. So, as we've mentioned, Mildred's experiment could be criticised because the task that is asked to be done by the participants is not like a task they would ever be expected to do in real life. Nobody's set across a bank of electrodes and asked to uh, deliver shocks to people. Therefore, if the task isn't like real life, then we might not expect the outcome to be like real life. So we would say the task lacks mundane realism. We, of course, can also criticise Milgram's study as being unethical. And this is due to potential to harm to the participants involved, potential to psychological harm for these participants. However, what we could argue is we could argue that it was still worth carrying out Milgram's study. This is because we can carry out something called a cost-benefit analysis. We can say that the benefit to society of greater scientific knowledge about this area of the power of obedience was actually worth the potential of you know, some psychological harm to quite a small number of participants. This is what a cost-benefit analysis is. We work out the costs, which in this case is psychological harm to a few people, and the benefits, a greater scientific knowledge about obedience. And likely, we would say, because Milgram's study has been so fundamental in how we understand obedience, even though ethically it may be problematic, we should still carry it out. Okay, and hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a like. After if you haven't already, click subscribe to be updated with new videos. That they were and also, if you have any questions about the content covered during this video, please drop a, a comment in the comments below. If you see a question and you think you can answer it, then please give that a go as well. Thank you very much. Until the next episode of Psychboost.